Let's Grab It episode number one. Let's Grab It is a series where I showcase the creation of vector art using Gravit Designer, a free cross-platform and fully featured vector design application. I will include a link to their website below for more information. Today the subject will be frogs. Please feel free to pause the video as needed in order to follow along and be sure to ask any questions you may have in the comments below. Thank you for watching and let's get started. This is what Gravit Designer looks like on a fresh install. Before we begin, I'd recommend making a few changes, but you don't have to, these are more for preference. Click on any of the templates listed on the print front page to get into the program, then go to Edit and Settings. First one I'd enable is Invert Selection Mode. This basically allows you to select multiple objects with a full selection tool, and I'll explain this a little bit later. The next setting change would be the coloring. I prefer dark over the default purple and save changes. But again, that's more of a personal preference. So if we look at the welcome screen, they have a bunch of stock templates included. You can see media templates, blog templates, social media, device templates, all different sizes and shapes. These are there for you to use and I would recommend checking them out. They also have their own built-in cloud feature that allows you to save, open, and manage files from their cloud. This does require you to create a Gravit account, however. Let's start by creating an Instagram post. This is generally the basic size that I use, it's 1080 by 1080. So we'll begin by selecting the ellipse. You can either press E on the keyboard for the shortcut, or you can go up and select ellipse from the drop-down menu. I would recommend learning the shortcut keys. Once you have the ellipse tool selected, draw out an oval and then center it. You can see I had the snap feature enabled where it centered the oval to the center of the layout. If yours is not on, I would recommend clicking the magnet over here in the left to turn snap on. Next thing we want to do is choose the fill and go toward a green. Now here I'd recommend selecting any green you, you like or you're comfortable with. Once you have your green selected, you'll see it on the screen. The next step is to choose a rectangle. You can either choose it from the drop down box or hit R on the keyboard. Again, I would recommend learning the shortcut. Once you have the rectangle tool selected, let it snap to the center of the oval as seen above and drag a rectangle out over the bottom of the oval. Now using shift, I want you to select the rectangle and the oval. And if you go up in the top menu, you're gonna be able to choose subtract and you can see that the rectangle cut away from the oval shape, leaving a half oval. Now, I'd recommend hitting Control C, Control V. This will make a copy of that half oval and then paste it. Once it's done, choose the flip vertical, and then simply drag that shape down to meet the other half. If you hold Shift while dragging, it will constrain it so it drags straight down and doesn't move. Now for the color, I would choose the fill, and then just drag straight down from where the original green was to create a darker shade. Once this is done, you'll see the two different colors on the oval. Now, we want to drag the bottom shape below the top shape. There's several ways you can do this. On the left hand side, you can drag the shape below it. You can right click on the shape. And you can arrange, send it back. Or, what I prefer to do is use the shortcut key, which is Control Shift Down. And that will send it below the other shape. Now if we drag it up, we'll see the darker shape is behind the lighter shape. If you grab the handle on the left or right corner, and you hold shift, you can constrain that bottom oval in as you drag it in. The next step is going to be to choose the top oval, and we want to turn this to a path. You can do this in two ways. Right click the shape and convert to path, or if you hold control shift P. The reason we want this to be a path is we want to be able to edit the nodes. So this brings us to pointers and the sub select tool. The pointer tool allows you to take shapes and move them around the display. The sub-select tool allows you to modify the points on the shape. So once it's converted to a path, you can see how the sub-select tool modifies the anchor point. So you can simply drag that line down in the bottom to create a rounded shape. Or another tool is we can use the path tool 
and when you hold shift with the path tool, it will create a node at the center point of a line. And then once you have that point, you can drag it down and then convert it to rounded. Now you can see that top lip has more of a rounded shape to it. Next we want to grab the ellipse tool by either hitting E or choosing it. And then we're going to create two small ovals for the nose. Drag down to a dark blue color. And we're going to set the opacity to 10%. I think 10 might be too low. But let's try maybe 20. There we go. So now take that shape, control C and control V to copy and paste it, and then hold shift to drag it and constrain it along the other lines. Select both shapes and then center them and you can see how they snap to the center of the top shape. So select all the shapes, click the top, left, bottom, right corner, whichever one you prefer, and then hold shift as you drag them down to resize them all simultaneously. And again, if you don't hold shift, it won't resize properly. You can also see the snap function working there as well, snapping to the center of the stage. Now hit E, or select the circle, the ellipse, and hold shift and create a perfect circle shape. We want to take the color picker and choose the same bottom green that we chose for the bottom mouth. We then want to take this shape and send it to the back. So again, we can right click, send it back, or we can control shift down, which is what I prefer to use. Once that shape is in place, copy it with control C and then paste it with control V. And then drag the right corner and use the shift to constrain to a perfect circle and resize it to about that shape. We then want to turn it into a dark blue or a black or something of that color. You are then going to copy and paste that shape, hold shift and constrain it down. Move it over to the center. And then turn it to like a white or a really light gray. Now that we have the eye created, we want to select the entire shape and then hit Control C, Control V to copy and paste it, and then drag it to the right while holding Shift to constrain it to keep everything in line. Once there, hit Flip Horizontal. And if we then select both eye shapes, we can then drag to the center and you can see it snap to the center of the oval. That snap feature is extremely useful. Now take another ellipse shape draw it right about the center of the head and then send it to the back and then using the color picker we want to choose the same color that we use for the back of the eye for the top of the eye rather but once we have that color we want to make it slightly darker so drag it straight down and then you can move that to where you're comfortable here I just selected all the objects Use shift to constrain and resize them again until I'm comfortable with it. And then of course snap them to the center of the canvas. Select the ellipse tool and create another circle at the bottom for the body. And this doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Once you have it right about there, send it to the back. And using the color select, we want to give it the same green as the upper lip. Once you're happy with that, copy and paste it, and drag that down using shift to constrain, and then drag it to the center, and you can see it snap. Then go into your colors and drag it up to get a lighter shade. Now at this point I just want to show that we've used the same color green for the entire frog. Starting with the green of the upper lip, we've just dragged it up and down in the darkness shader, so everything follows that same one color palette. I find this to be a useful way to color objects, because it keeps the colors very harmonious so that things look good. Now drag and select the entire shape and then hold shift to constrain and resize to the center of the canvas. Select the ellipse tool and drag a long oval and then you can see the rotate function at the top. We want to slightly rotate it off to the side. This will take a little bit of working to get the size right and everything but if you work on it you'll, you'll, you'll get the feel for it. Keep rotating, keep moving. We're going for like an upper back leg. Now 
take the color picker and use that back head color. And then get the size where you're comfortable. Good. Now, take the ellipse tool and give it the same color as the back leg and move it up just slightly to give it a little bit of a color variance. And then one feature I like to use, if you cut an object with Control X and then you just select another object and hit Control V, it will paste that object you cut directly on top of that new object in the layer panel. So if you watch this foot, it will disappear from the front of the body and then appear in front of the leg. Then select the rectangle tool and drag a rectangle over half of that ellipse and then subtract it to create a half circle. And again, we're gonna cut it and paste it in front of the leg and then sort of drag it in there. And now you can see it looks like a leg with a foot in the back. Select both shapes, the back leg and the foot, hit Control C, Control V, and then choose flip horizontal. And then using Shift to Constrain, drag that leg and foot over to the right. Then select both legs and both feet and then center them on the frog. Then we want to take that back foot, copy it, then choose the front body and paste it to paste it in front of it. And then slightly resize it to fit. And this is more of a preference how big you want this. And then copy and paste that shape over. So you have two in the front. And then using shift, select them both. And then resize them. And then drag them to center them on the frog. And you can see the snap feature working there. Now take, select the entire shape, holding shift to constrain, and then center the frog exactly on the center of the canvas. And you'll see an X to snap it in there. Now selecting the ellipse tool, you want to drag an oval right about there, and then give it a dark color and set the opacity to 30%. Send that object to the back and then move it right about there. Then manipulate the shape to look like a shadow under the frog. Right about there looks pretty good. Now, a cool feature in Gravit is you can use the page functionality on the right. You see where this color swatch is. If you choose that color swatch and you pick a color, you're going to change the actual artboard color, the background color. So you don't have to insert another shape and change the color. And there you go. From here, you can save the file locally to your machine or to the cloud. Again, the cloud save does require a Gravit account. The other thing you can do if you choose to is you can export the file. There are several different choices here. The great thing about Gravit is that because it's cross-platform, it runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, it even runs on a browser. So you can create art anywhere. And that pretty much sums this up. I think this is pretty easy to follow, and of course from here you can add detail and other features if you would like to, but I think this gives you the basic idea of what you can do. Thank you for joining me in this lesson. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, or leave a comment. Also, if you have a request or something you would like to see me draw, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you, and have a great day.